This is going to be our Bible study for Greater Grace Church of Chester and Hellsmere Port tonight uh, on this Sunday night. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If this is the first time you found us, you can also find us at ggchurch.co.uk and you can come and visit us in Backford, Chester. Uh, find us in the former school building and uh, come and uh, look through the window like somebody did today apparently uh, and see what goes on there or come inside and join with us uh, we uh, just want to open God's word and uh, hear something from him we pray for uh, God's spirit to fill and guide in all of these things so tonight uh, we go off with a few announcements for the week ahead slightly different this week uh, bear with us on that uh, we have for example um, Tuesday night we're going to join with uh, the Christian Institute that are doing a meeting in um, New Ferry I think it's an Arcs Church you need directions for that at 7.45 on Tuesday night a little bit later than we normally do our services these days but uh, join with us for that if you can um, and then on Wednesday there will be a ladies Bible study at 10.30 in the morning so uh, plenty going on this week and then Saturday night at Andrew and Diane's house if you need directions ask me for that um, we're going to have a wrap uh, Pastor Morley will be visiting uh, and then on the Sunday we're going to be celebrating Ruby's birthday uh, it's, she's going to be 99 we're going to go out for a meal after service at 11 o'clock in the morning but that's what we're announcing for the weekend ahead so there's plenty of things going on this week uh, join with us for whatever you are able to uh, so that's uh, what's going on in Greater Grace Church of Chester and Elsby Ford let's do something tonight as well so that we actually have a, a, a service or a Bible study this evening for ourselves let's, uh, let's pray we'll give the time to the Lord and we'll just see what he does because uh, he's not really up to us anyway Heavenly Father thank you Lord for this time uh, together thank you Lord for those that are able to see and watch thank you for uh, every blessing that you've given us thank you for your constant faithfulness towards us thank you Lord for what you've done for us thank you Lord that we're saved by your power by your action by the finished work of Jesus Christ nothing of ourselves nothing of man no human effort involved thank you Lord that it is you who does a work in our lives Lord. fill us with your spirit fill us with your life uh, and guide us tonight Lord anoint these words and these thoughts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ if you are able to hear us and see us please leave us a like, a comment a reaction, an emoji, a gif a wave or whatever else you decide uh, let's read tonight we're going to read from um, from um, Ezekiel chapter 37 that's what we read this morning uh, it's a well known chapter unusual chapter and it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause my breath to enter unto you and ye shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover 
you with this, with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army then said he unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel behold they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off from our parts therefore prophesy and say unto them thus saith the Lord God behold O my people I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O my people and brought you up out of your graves and put my spirit in you and you shall live and shall I shall place you in your own land then shall you know that I am the Lord I, uh, that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord ok we will pause there for a moment and uh, with that powerful passage in mind let's pray again Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord and we worship you now thank you for who you are thank you that you are the God of power thank you Lord that you make a difference in every life you have the potential to make a difference in every life guide us tonight Lord we pray fill us with your spirit we have nothing, we are nothing, we have no message. But your word is mighty and powerful. It gives life to dry bones. And Lord, we just seek your spirit now that you would guide us and fill us with your life. Give us a word for tonight, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, yeah, this passage we were saying this morning, is it an actual event, did it happen, or was it just a vision, was it just like a, a, a parable, we, we're discussing in that, our wrap this uh, afternoon after our service, uh, for those of you who don't know what a wrap is, we just discuss together what we've received from God's word each one who was at, the, at church and uh, what, what it meant to us what it spoke to us about I think it was Diane was saying that actually you look at Ezekiel it's full of other visions isn't it it's true uh, the wheel within the wheel the, the living creatures the one the creature with the face of a, a man a bull an eagle and a, and a, and a lion uh, it's full of it's the the picture of the, the dry bones, the, the image of the river as well, whether these things did actually 
happen or whether they, they were just visions that actually were given to uh, the prophet Ezekiel you know it's like yeah it's a picture of the power of, of God whether it, it happened in the way the actual fact that we that we uh, see or whether it was just a vision of what God could do uh, either way we see the power of God's word and uh, looking at this I was thinking about that this morning we touched on it uh, today that actually the bones were very dry there's no life in them at all nothing of themselves uh, they can't produce the life themselves they can't uh, reform you know, they are as dead as they can be uh, the the moisture in the bone is in the marrow isn't it uh, and uh, that's uh, the, the bone marrow actually is, is, is mentioned quite a few times in God's word you know uh, the joints from the, 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 the word of God is said to be sharp and uh, uh, two edged sword that is able to divide even the, 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 the joints from the marrow in other words split open bone and uh, but the marrow is the life giving part isn't it uh, but the marrow often is is, um, is is spoken of as the as the moisture in fact I think it even isn't it it's Samson when he breaks open the jawbone of the ass the moisture that is in there that he drinks uh, after he's killed the Philistines with the jawbone of the ass is the marrow from the centre of the bone and you think wow it's not particularly something that I would desire to drink myself but it, it, you know that is the thing that actually uh, there's always this contrast now here the bones are are very dry in other words there's no marrow left in them uh, the marrow is what produces the red blood cells the white blood cells and uh, and regenerates our blood so it's quite quite important for us in our in our physical health so in, in a funny sort of way we're we're talking about here um, that um, there is no blood there is, this is a this is a bone without blood um, it's uh, yeah, and the life is in the blood isn't it that's what the word of God tells us as well in, that's in Leviticus but yeah the life is in the blood the bones are very dry there is no bone marrow and there's no potential for there to be blood there is no potential for there to be any marrow it's completely dry completely lifeless but the power of God's word spoken into the situation and the life of God's spirit coming into the situation is able to make a difference and is able to cause these dry bones to live at God's command not anything that Ezekiel could do he doesn't even know whether it's possible but he says you know I'm going to defer to God you know Lord you know Lord whether this is possible or not I'm not even going to presume to give an answer either way but I'm going to trust you and your judgment in it and we were saying this morning that it says there that actually what happened was that the sinews came upon them. the sinew like we said this morning is the connective tissue isn't it it's like uh, there was a there was a, a connection there um, the sinew as well uh, is what links one bone to another but um, you know we are God's people and we are the body of Christ and there is a, a, a link together for God's people we are all parts of the body of Christ the, the body of Christ is 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 needed 
within you know people often think of the body of Christ as being like all all of the different churches together every different denomination yeah that's true but also within a church there is the body of Christ there are people who have different spiritual gifts different callings and uh, different skill sets uh, who need uh, to be in the body of Christ and we all need each other and there's a link there the joining together of one to another uh, <laughs> represented by by the uh, the sinews uh, it joins one bone to another a connection you know we have a we have a godly connection one to another in the body of Christ you know sometimes we we don't always necessarily have the earthly connection uh, not everybody who's a Christian has the same interest as us has the same um, uh, social grouping or standing or status or whatever it is you know a sociologist puts people together and says oh this person will get on with that person but uh, you know often within the body of Christ it goes beyond that uh, the sinew connects one to another and the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is that connection our our salvation is the connection the fact that we are all together in God's kingdom is what connects us is what bonds us together we have the life of Christ the, the, the shared experience of salvation and the shared experience of sanctification that actually God is working that into our lives and as we grow with with him um, we, we take steps of faith with him that is important for us sometimes we are oh, we emphasize salvation a lot so it's about getting people saved and yes that's true he who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved and we we've in evangelical churches over the years we've often uh, made that our focus evangelism it's about getting people saved which is great which is necessary because people will avoid hell but there's also the sanctification in other words our walk with the Lord our Christian experience and our growth with him and that's also one of the things that binds us together is uh, is that uh, connection that yes I want to go forward with God and I realize that God is doing something in my life and I come and I share that with the, with other people who have the same experience that they're growing in Christ it's a necessary thing we need connection we need fellowship we need life and uh, the sin you joining them together then the flesh now think about it it's also Ezekiel who says you know I will take away the, the, the heart of stone and this is again the spirit of God speaking through him I will take away the heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh great words uh, God having loved us with an, with an everlasting love you know this uh, book of Ezekiel bit very misunderstood at times but actually there's a lot of powerful things in there and yeah God will take away the, the heart of stone the cold dry heart uh, in fact we don't read that these these people are given a heart but they are given flesh and we are uh, assume that actually if they're given flesh they're given the organs that are necessary it doesn't say that they were given a face that's not the important thing when it comes to to God it actually he just says you know they're given sinews they're given that flesh and then they're given skin now skin is a covering think about that way back in the Garden of Eden um, okay Adam was created with skin great okay yes that's obvious and so was Eve but then when mankind fell what did God do 
they were they were found to be naked. They decided that them, themselves, or they realised that themselves. It wasn't God that said it. God wasn't accusing them. It was man's own conscience that felt inadequate, that felt embarrassed, that felt guilty for being naked, that felt ashamed. All of these things came in as a result of the fall of man. But what was God's answer? Was to take a sacrifice. The first animal, the first God had created the animals, the first animal was killed. Blood sacrifice for sin is the very early on, we tend to forget that part. Yeah, but blood sacrifice is right in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Immediately, an animal is, is, is killed and a, and a coat of skin is made. So, uh, it's very interesting when we look at that. You think about it. Cain's offering was rejected. Why? Because it was from the earth that had been cursed. And Adam and Eve's covering was, was vegetation as well. Same sort of thing. Uh, fig leaf. And they are big, but they wither away very quickly. Dry up very quickly. And become an inadequate covering. But God said no. Abel's offering, when he, that comes along. That, again, it's, a, it's an offering of a blood sacrifice of an animal. Not something he's worked for, not something he's made himself, but something that the Lord has provided. He takes the, the animal and sacrifices it to the Lord, and that pleases the Lord. Why? Because actually, God has already done the same thing. For Adam and Eve, he's taken an animal, sacrificed it, and made a coat of skin. Skin represents a covering. So these these souls that were dead in the the valley of dry bones, uh, it's a picture of us before we have met Christ. We are lifeless. We are without hope. We have no direction, no purpose. The word of God comes to us. Um, the word of God speaking into our life. Um, by the prophet uh, comes into our life and the word of God makes a difference uh, we all have had the gospel preached to us every one of us who are saved who are born again Christians we've had the gospel preached to us at some point and the word of God made a difference in our heart made a difference to our conscience and spoke to us deeply and in the same way the word of God spoken to the dry bones was able to put make that connection to other believers it was also give them a flesh give them a feeling give them a emotion give them give them a love there uh, the heart of flesh but also a give them a covering so that they were covered with skin and and God for us, we are given the covering. We're given a robe of righteousness in our, in our case. So uh, our sin is covered. Uh, it is dealt with completely. And so we, like the dry bones, are hopeless before we, 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 we meet the Lord. But then afterwards we have everything that we need to succeed. But there's also this point whereby... Um, Ezekiel has followed all the instructions. He's said everything. He's done exactly what the Lord told him. And the bones are covered with sinew, flesh and skin. But there is still no life in them. And God says prophesy again. You know, one prophecy is not enough. One message is not enough. One preaching is not enough. We need the constantly... Uh, to be receiving uh, God's word 
and it, and that's what happens. It goes, God's word comes again. He he prophesies God's word again, and this time the four winds put the breath of life into them, and they live. They stand upon their feet. They are able to stand. They are able to stand up and walk. They are able to actually, and again, like for us, we are able to stand on our feet, take a stand for the Lord. We are able to walk after Him. We are able to follow Him. We become a great and mighty army. Like uh, like it says there, uh, they 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 stood there, <laughs> and it's like wow, these people uh, is it it's re, it regarded as, as Israel, uh, and it says that you know Israel have said we have no hope. Now it's interesting, isn't it? As, as believers we believe that actually God is not finished with Israel yet the story is not over uh, we don't believe in replacement theology that the church has become the inheritor of all the promises and Israel is finished with no Israel is still going to be used by God and we see that particularly in the end times but even today Israel is being blessed by God in many ways and uh, the Jews still have a portion with the Lord but God is using the church to actually provoke Israel to jealousy, as we read in in, uh, in Romans. But uh, but yeah, uh, Israel have said, um, you know, uh, that they have no hope. Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Now think about that. The bones there were cut off from their flesh um, the being cut off is something that that is uh, um, a an image throughout the scripture as well uh, being cut off from the congregation that if people transgressed too far that they would be cut off uh, if they were they were they um, did certain things it's interesting you see the Old Testament law certain things were you know you would stone someone to death for certain misdemeanors but for other things it just said they would be cut off from the congregation so put away so that they didn't influence people uh, put out of fellowship as it were uh, and then they are cut off but then the, the image in the again in the book of Romans is about Israel being cut off the branch of the tree being cut off and a, another tree grafted in we have an apple tree in our garden and you can see that point where the good root stock comes out of the ground but then the good fruit stock has been grafted in and you can more or less see the point in that tree where where it where that has happened the same with a rose tree that we have we have a massive rose tree in our garden and again you see the 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 root stock the briar that has goes into the the ground but there's also the point where the the good roses the flowering part has been grafted in to that uh to that same plant uh, we can do that that's is an amazing thing in nature uh we see that so you know being cut off that's the that's what Israel is saying. Oh, we're we're we we have no hope. We've been cut off. God has cut us off. Now remember that this is being written by Ezekiel, um, by the river Shabar, which is like he's in captivity. He's in Babylon. It's like God, God has taken him out, and this is the season where actually uh, God's nation they are. In captivity but God still speaks to them he's still using them and he still has this picture for them of hey it's not over it's not the end of the story I'm gonna take you up out of your graves even the grave is not the end of the story I'll raise you out of the graves and I'll put my life in you I'll put my breath in you I'll put my spirit in you and you will live again and I have a for you 
and the, the message for us today is the same thing we like the dry bones uh, the dry bones are a picture of us before we know the Lord but actually once we know him he says well you know this is not the end of the story yes we are we are crucified with Christ yes we are buried with Christ but we are also raised with Christ so our graves are open just like these graves of these people were as well just like it says in, in the passage that we read our graves are open we are raised with Christ so we have the life of Christ in us and we have a purpose in the same way that uh, God had not finished with these dry bones God has not finished with us either whatever happens in this life however hard it gets however difficult whatever we face whatever our past has been whatever we fear our future may be none of that matters what matters is the fact that actually God is able to prophesy into our life God is able to put his spirit in us his life in us his breath in us and give us a purpose Ezekiel was given that purpose to prophesy and he actually did exactly what he was told to he obeyed God and the word of God came out and you know what we are given a calling we are given a calling to share our faith to be a light in the darkness we are given a calling to be God's presence on the earth his hands and his feet when he can't be here physically himself but he puts his life in us his spirit in us he guides us he uses us for his purpose God's people on the earth are a blessing to the world the world does not look on Christians as being a blessing they look on Christians as being a nuisance a curse uh, a problem uh, the difficult ones the awkward ones but you know what we are called to be salt and we are called to be light and I've said it many times before that salt is an irritant if you get it in your eye salt can be also an emetic if you drink salt water you can vomit uh, salt is also used to preserve things it's also used to, cl to clean things and uh, the point is we're, we, we are here not just to uh, be a little bit of decoration and not just to be interesting not just to be nice to people we are here to be a challenge we are here to stand out interesting when we come to the human body again and I like this fact okay the dry bones themselves they couldn't produce life they couldn't produce marrow they couldn't produce blood cells nothing it's all just dead our human body we can produce certain sugars we can produce everything that we need one thing that is vital to life well there are two things that are vital to life that the human body cannot produce itself we need water obviously we need air to breathe but also we need salt and the human body cannot produce its own salt it has to take it in from outside gone off at a slight tangent here but uh, but the most important thing is this to remember that she God has a purpose for us he puts his life in us it's not the end of the story we still have a calling we still have a purpose while we are on the earth if you are still alive today God has a purpose for you so let's pray and we'll give the rest of our night to the Lord Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord that you actually have called each one of us to trust you you've put your life in us we didn't ask for it we didn't plan for it we couldn't produce it ourselves but thank you Lord that you chose by your word by your spirit by your power to put your life in us the life of the Lord Jesus Christ resurrection life thank you Lord that you came you died for us you were buried for us but you rose again for us 
thank you Lord that just as these graves were opened and these bones arose so you are alive today and so we in the deadness of our flesh and our depression our failure our hopelessness we can have the same quality of life of purpose of direction of calling by trusting you Lord fill us with your life tonight Lord we pray and if there's anyone out there that has never trusted Christ as their saviour Lord we pray that this would be the time that they say Lord I'm dry I'm lifeless I have no hope I don't know what my purpose is on this earth I know that I'm a failure I know that I've done things wrong I had no hope to be holy or or good in my own right but Lord I know that you came for my purpose you came for my life you love me and you gave your life for me and Lord I just thank you I pray that you just touch me now fill me with your spirit and transform me now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen and if you prayed that prayer for the first time please let someone know we're going to head off now we're going to uh, leave it for this evening but uh, God bless you uh, take care and hopefully we will see you again soon come and visit us, come and join with us uh, take care for now bye bye